Hello there, and welcome to this session. Here I'm talking about the mail user contacts that need to be created for a cross-tenant Microsoft 365 migration. So you would have set up things in the, in the other videos you've seen of mine where we configure the cross-tenant migration for 365 and get that done to a test migration. Now we're getting into more of a production state where we want to take a whole block of users across. Now, the, the, the tricky part here is how are we going to be automating and, and running the mail user creation component of it? And I want to show you something I've put together with the discovery tool to make that a lot easier for you. So it's a bit of an overview of the scenario we've got here. This is the target tenant. As you can see, we've got one user in there in the contacts, which is the mail user. That was our test user that we're doing the migration with, and that's obviously worked fine, and that's good. Now what we need to do is take the block of users that we're going to be migrating from the, the other tenant and get them created in here as mail users. Now we're going to do that with PowerShell, obviously, and I want to show you how we might be able to do that nice and quickly and easily. Uh, again, like I said, using that uh, discovery tool that I put together. So here it is. We open up a PowerShell window with administrator privileges, load up the script. You can see here that version 4.52. That's the latest one that will do these tasks for us. And what it does is the discovery tool collects all the information about the entire tenant. So in this scenario, we're going to give it the source tenant to have a look at, and it will create a complete spreadsheet of everything that it looks like. What we're going to do then is in the, uh, the spreadsheet for the users, we're going to tag the users for migration and nice and quickly grab the PowerShell commands that it puts in there automatically for us to populate the mail users and also have them with the exchange GUIDs that it needs to apply for the cross-tenant migration and also the X500 addresses that it's going to apply as well. So we're just going to tag them, cut and paste those PowerShell lines into another PowerShell window, run them to get this, get this functioning very quickly. So let's kick this script off and I'll show you how that works. So let's run this script then. And hit play. I will just make it a little bigger so we can see what's going on. And a couple of things you need to know about running this script. It will obviously collect all this information for us, all different reports and things there. The, the option Z there is the full discovery report and it creates the spreadsheet output. That's the one we're going to be using for this. But we need to have items number one and number two put in there. So the admin credential, it will collect it. Now this works great if you don't have MFA. If you do have MFA on your tenant for the admin account you're going to use for this, do not put those admin credentials into that because it won't be able to connect. By leaving it blank when it wants to co correct, sorry, connect to those PowerShell modules, it will then ask you for the credentials and go in there and prompt you for the MFA and do that work um, accordingly. So I'm going to then say number two, which is the tenant prefix. It does require that one. That is an important one to put in. So, so we'll put in number two and my tenant prefix, we just put in just the name. There, we don't put the on Microsoft.com. Uh, that will get appended for us automatically. Now, in this particular scenario, I don't have MFA on the tenant for this particular um, admin account. I know it's just a test tenant, it's fine. Um, but we're just gonna put number one there. It will ask what they are. So you can see there, type that in. And that will keep those in place. And you can see they've now gone green here. Um, so that's good. I can do number three, which is to check in all the PowerShell modules are installed. And you can see there it comes back green that it is. So we can do the item Z and kick that off. And that will go ahead and connect to all those different modules. And it will then uh, create that nice spreadsheet output. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause the video now and let that just run through. Uh, probably grab it at certain points in it so we can see what's going on. But um, you can see it's just running through and grabbing data for the 21 users it's found there and it will be creating the different csvs just checking in on the script quickly you can see it's uh, chugging away nicely done the team's work it's just doing the mailboxes now so we'll just let it continue now that's finished its first part now i'm just going to scroll back up slightly you can see that's where it's created the spreadsheet and running up there there's all the the output files it's done so there's quite a quite an extensive report that it's created I'm going to leave it in this state right now. and I'm just going to bring up that spreadsheet just to show you what's in there. So this tenant that we're looking at was actually created as a sandbox tenant as a default when we did the, the E5 developer side. So all of these items here are Microsoft generated, apart from a couple which are mine, obviously. 
Um, you can see these all these reports anyway. Now, uh, what I want to look at here is the fact that yes, we have the mailboxes. I'm going to come back to that because just very quickly, we can see here if we look at teams, you see these are all the different teams that are in there, the storage capacity, where they are. There's a lot of things created there. And also the, the team's channels and the members of those channels, owners, and you can see different members here. So really, if you wanted to look at a particular user and say what teams are they a member of or a particular team and say who the members are, you can find that quite easily too. And, th and that's really handy if you're just doing the, the filters there. We could say filter it on a team user and you could say, I want to know everything that Bill is a member of. And you can see he's a member of marketing and finance. So it's quite an easy um, function to get out of there. And of course, Teams channels, you could do exactly the same thing. Uh, we could uh, just do a quick filter and you can say, okay, let's have a look at Bill. And these are all the different channels that he is a member of. You can see here, he is a member of this private channel inside finance as well as the general, whereas other people um, you may not have that, that uh, channel applied to them. So it's, it's quite handy from a reporting perspective to see you know, who's there. You've got the SharePoint as well. We've got all the SharePoint sizing, all the different uh, sites that are available. Uh, it also shows whether they are Teams connected and Teams channel connected. Anything here with true on it means it is actually a Teams site, not strictly a SharePoint site. But these ones here you can see are, are SharePoint sites. So you can filter on those and, and look around those. Uh, complete OneDrive report. You can see what the, the storage used on all these users. Yeah, not very much on those ones, but it is, like I say, a sandbox site. But you get all the, the URLs and modified dates and things. MFA status, who's got MFA configured, who hasn't. And are they an admin, the like? So uh, that's handy to have as a report. And in this tenant, we don't have guest accounts and contacts and things as yet. And there's really not much uh, distribution list membership. As you can see here, there's only one there. But if we did have a lot more data in there, you'd get a, a much bigger report. But I'm interested in the user mailboxes here. Because if I scroll across slightly, you know, go relatively slowly, you can see there's your total size here. Now I've got a field in here called batch name. Now this isn't collected from the tenant. It's one that we can use later on to do these particular tasks. So it's handy to have. But you can see here, last logon times, last action times. And I also put an item in here to say, what is the inbox size? What's their calendar item count? It's really when you're doing a migration, it's just handy to, to know, do they even have calendar items? Do they even have contacts? Um, so that's, as I say, good to have in there. And let's have a look across. Any delegation on the mailboxes, you'll see here as well, full access, send as, and send on behalf of. It will show the, the usernames that have that access, all the email addresses, the license, the admin details, and legacy DN. And also, obviously, the exchange GUID as well is in there too. Now, what I'm going to do now is just close that out and not save it because you can see this is what obviously all the, the CSVs it creates. But... What I'm going to do is go back here and I'm going to choose this option ZZ. And it's going to take that spreadsheet, as you can see, there's the one it's going to edit. And you can tell it based on the information that is in there already. I want to create mail users with a mapped exchange grid and legacy at the end for the MRS migration. So I'm going to use number three here. And I do need to give it a target UPN suffix. So that is on this particular one is going to be Com, and you'll see how that's relevant shortly. But if we do that, we'll go in, you can see it brings up the spreadsheet in the background of the script is making those changes. And that is done. That happens very quickly. So now let's go back into that spreadsheet. This one here, let's open that up again. And let's see what changes it's made. So obviously this is all untouched, but it's, it's the ones on the other side that it's done. If I go across all the way across here, it's added all of this content for us here. So it has create has the option there to say new mail users and do the setting. What I'm going to do is just um, expand those out. You would actually see what that is there if you expand it fully out. In this particular case, I'm not going to. I'm going to cut and paste them into PowerShell so we can use them. But the identity one is is interesting because that's the new identity they'll get in Planium based on the, the, the current um, address that they have. And obviously that's the UPN suffix. And it pulls all this information out. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to our over here, and I'm gonna say, well, we're gonna do some migration work. 
So I'm going to tag some people that we want to have in this migration. So I might call it batch one and I'm going to say, OK, we want batch one and you can have batch two, batch three and, and keep, it, keep it bigger. But this is handy for when you set them up later on. So we're going to have I'm going to tag and say these are the people and I'm going to grab four of them. Uh, let's grab these and batch one. Now, what we do with that is I would say then go and do a filter and I'll filter by batch name. So it really just segregates out these people we'll use in this particular batch. Now you could have a spreadsheet of a thousand people or more, and you can do a similar thing, just batch them up accordingly. But what we're going to do is go across here now because we need to create the mail users for this migration. You can see we have these blocks of PowerShell commands that it's created for us. Now this is the, uh, the, the step that I put in recently to make this quite easy. So we're going to grab all of those and copy them into a PowerShell window. So we'll do that, bring up PowerShell there, and you can see I'm just going to paste that in. And I'm going to grab the other ones as well. So I'm going to go back into here and grab that little set, copy that, and put that in here as well. And then the last one, which is the X500, which we'll set accordingly. So what it's done is it's created these commands for us to say these are the ones we're going to be migrating. These are our users. And you can see it's created all of the commands necessary to populate those mail users. So what we'll do is I'm just going to jump back into that other tenant. And here we are here. So if I hit refresh, you can see that there's no smoke and mirrors in this one. This is going to be live. And it's just one contact already. That was our test user. So let's just jump in to here and we'll run that. Kick it off. And that will go ahead and create those four mail users for us. So it's doing there. And it should come back in a second. There we go. Now, obviously, it's not going to happen immediately. You need to wait probably uh, yeah, a very short time um, for them to appear. But we can just hit the refresh and see if that comes up. And with that, we've got three of them already. And if I hit refresh again, I should get there we are there's our fourth one there so these these accounts are now ready for migration very easily created they've got the exchange GUIDs applied to them they've got the x500 addresses applied to them and really they are ready to go so it's doing a whole lot of manual style scripting to make that work now if we wanted to create a batch for these four users and kick them off for the migration you can see if i look at migration here we've just got this one user which is nestor and he's just syncing there and uh, that's all good so we're going to grab the uh, other four users, put them into a batch, and we will migrate them as well. And we can do that quite easily with that spreadsheet as well as. So what we're going to do is come back to our spreadsheet. which has still got the batch tagged on there. You can see we've got the batch one. But we will go back across into that identity part, and we're going to grab these identities and copy those into a brand new spreadsheet. So in a blank worksheet. We'll call it email address at the top, which is necessary. And we'll just go back into this one, copy those, drop them in there. And there's our four users. We'll save that onto our local drive. We'll put them on the C drive scripts and we'll call it uh, batch one. And when we save it, be sure to make it a CSV, common delimited file, like that. And we'll just hit save there and then close that one out now if we look at the c drive for scripts you'll see now we've got this little batch one file here which we are going to to use in the powershell script you can see there's our email addresses for that migration so under another powershell which is obviously still connected here as you can see from our user i'm going to quite easily we'll call this one batch one and we've got this pre-populated with the endpoint that we used already. And we'll call this right here, batch one, which is the file it's going to pick up. And you can see target delivery domain. It's quite simple what we do here. It saves us doing the whole next, 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 and finding your CSV and the like. It's very cumbersome. So we're just going to run this. If I just hit play there, that will create that batch for us. There is an option. You can put a dash auto start in there if you want it to kick off the batch straight away. I prefer to actually kick them off manually, to be honest with you. Uh, but you know, if you're doing 100 or so, you might want to, to do that. But you can see now batch one says stopped and uh, it's really ready to go. Now if I jump back into, close all 
these down, go into that target tenant and look at the, uh, where are we now? So that is in the original. So we need to come back to the other one, which is here. So if I do a refresh on these batches, we should see here we are. Batch number one stopped. We've got four people in it. So I can click here and resume that migration, which will kick it off and get that working. And there you go. Nice and easy to, to get running, really. One last little thing I want to show you is that the migration screen here does lag behind a bit in terms of what you're seeing. And you can get a much better idea of the status from inside the PowerShell concepts here. So there's some commands once you've got that up and running there is we can have a look at uh, migration user, get migration user. What that'll show you is all of the users that are currently syncing and are currently in play. Now that we've only just kicked off that batch, so we're not going to see anything for those four users just for a little bit. Uh, we only see this one Nestor Walk, which I'd set off uh, earlier. Uh, so once again, I'll pause this for now and come back in a few uh, few minutes time when this one starts cranking and we should see the five users there. Then I'll show you how to get the status of individual users so you can keep track of how they're going in the migration. Okay, so doing a refresh here, you can see that this batch one is now syncing. And if I go into the batch one and have a look at details, you can see it's come up with names. Now that's that little trigger to say, yes, we can start looking them up and start looking at the status because it knows who they are. So let's jump back into our PowerShell and we'll run that same command again, get migration user. We should see, yeah, there we go, five people there and we've got batch one. So if I wanna have a look at this uh, Diego S and just have a bit more information about what's going on with him, we can do get migration user, and I will give it an identity, which will be s at selenium.com. If I do that, I'm going to get exactly the same information that it's displaying here. But what I'm going to do now is just pipe get migration user statistics on the end of it. You'll get to see a little bit more information. You can see what's happening, synced and the like. Um, but I'm going to add just one more thing on here, and I'm going to pipe out, and I'm going to select a few more things. So I'm going to say, I want to see identity. I want to see, and I want to see batch. I want to see the status. I want to see everything about sizing and everything about item. Now, if we run that one instead, you'll get a bit more information out of it. Bit of a different view, but now we can see, okay, what's our estimated total size, skipped items, synced item count, the whole thing. And that's quite a good one to, to look at and just to see how much is this one tracking along. These ones are very, very small, so they're going to go past pretty quickly once they get going. But if you had a large mailbox, you know, 20, 30 gig, uh, you can get a, a good handle on how things are actually going when we, uh, when we look at those. So it's just, as I say, handy little script to run just to keep an eye on the migration as it is progressing. So let me show you where you can get this script from. See here, if I go to the cloudgeezer.com website. Quite simply on that front screen there, you can see there it is at Microsoft 365 Discovery Report. And you can see what it does. Click inside there. You'll then get uh, all the details, all the good stuff I talk about. And there's the video how to use it. Now I'm linking off here into the actual product page and that's where you can download it. Okay, just go through exactly what it can do. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this is useful when you're creating the mail users inside the, uh, the target tenant. And as I say, hope this was helpful. Please subscribe to the channel. And I wish you a very good day, evening, morning, weekend, whatever time you're in. So thanks again and have a good one.